In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, and we thank him for giving to us a divine leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. I greet you, my beloved brothers, sisters, with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. And to those of you who may be unfamiliar with those greeting words, they mean peace be unto you. To my distinguished brother Jack the Rapper, who is really the father of the family affair, and to all of you, the wonderful communicators who communicate to our people and to all of the peoples of the world through your words and through the power of music, and to those of you who make music happen those who make records successful by your hard work. It is a great honor and privilege for me to have been invited to be your guest at the Family Fair this year, 1984, where I understand that the theme is it's a love affair. We have come through a very powerful and moving eight months in the year of 1984. A year that has seen the birth or the rebirth of movement among black people in our drive or thrust toward true freedom, justice, and equality. Those of us who were blessed to be around in the 60s and were a part of the great movement that gave birth to such magnificent leadership as the leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. and Whitney Young and, and Malcolm X and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and H. Rapp Brown and Stokely Carmichael and so many more. But we who were in the 60s and saw the destruction of these leaders and the destruction of most of the organizations that these leaders represented for our liberation and the destruction of these leaders and their organizations unfortunately was orchestrated by the United States government whom we have believed in and have worked and fought so hard for. It hurts to know that the government that we look to for guidance and direction, the government that we look to for the protection of our rights, the government that we look to to give us hope for tomorrow has been the number one enemy of our people's advancement. Now I know that's a bold statement for your brother to make, but as Barry Goldwater said the other night in Dallas and in your heart, you know I'm right. <laughs> it hurt to know that J. Edgar Hoover was so afraid of black unity, black advancement, that J. Edgar Hoover would foster a plan to systematically use all of the dirty tricks that the CIA uses abroad to destabilize governments that America does not approve of that J. Edgar Hoover would bring those dirty tricks home to the United States to use them against 
black leaders and black organizations who wanted to move a people forward, not against America, but toward our own freedom. So fearful were they of our unity and our quest for power that they felt it was in the best interest of America to destroy our leadership and our organizations. That was 20 years ago. Many blacks who were in the civil rights movement became so disenchanted, so disillusioned to see that in the ranks of our black organizations there were paid agents of the United States government paid to disrupt, paid to put brother against brother and sister against sister, paid to come in and sleep with the leader's wife and break up the family, paid to kill. This is true. Oft times we who spin the records and we who make music and we who party don't give adequate attention to the world of political reality in which we spin our records. And I say, beloved, all of us must be music conscious. But to be conscious of music means to be conscious of vibration, conscious of sound, conscious of dissonance, conscious of harmony. And if you live totally in the world of music without realizing that people make vibrations and the reality of the way we vibrate with one another gives us dissonance or harmony. And we live in a world that is not harmonious, a world full of dissonance. And while we spin the platters that give us the beat called funk <laughs> or give us the beat called fusion, there's another drummer that is beating and you know, music doesn't mean anything if the drummer can't keep time. And music doesn't mean anything if we are not in step with the time in which we live. This morning, for the few moments that we shall be together, I want to talk about how God makes negative things turn into positive things. And even though the government destroyed our leadership and our organizations, we are still here. And 20 years later, we are so much wiser. By the grace of God, 20 years later, we are so much stronger. 20 years later, movement has begun again. We didn't know how the movement would begin, how it would germinate, how it would catch fire. But a black woman from South Carolina gave us the answer. She gave birth to a child named Jesse Lewis Jackson. Now many may not fully appreciate what Reverend Jackson has done, not for some of us, but for all of us. When Jesse Jackson said he wanted to run for the presidency of the United States, that was comparable to one of the slaves in Israel saying, I want to be Pharaoh. <laughs> Now, brothers and sisters, just put yourself back 4,000 years. Imagine yourself in bondage in a land called Egypt. And one of the slaves stood up and said one day, You know, Sam, I think I'll run for the office of Pharaoh. Some of the other slaves would say, Man, is you crazy? Some of the slaves would get off in the corner and say, it ain't time yet. 
some of the other slaves. Some of the other slaves might be heard saying, right on, baby. But some of those close to Pharaoh would say, just a moment. You're hurting things. You're going to take the vote away from our Pharaoh that's running. Well, there was confusion on the plantation naturally. But of course, but of course, when the slaves started talking, and other slaves heard that slave talk, said, look at him, listen to him. Can you imagine one of us is going to be Pharaoh? Can you imagine the whispering going on in the hamlets, in the villages? People talking. I think, I think it can happen. Maybe it can. I don't know, but he got my vote. Shh, don't talk too loud. <laughs> Some of the Egyptians told the Israelites, now you ought to know that you can't win. After all, we're the majority here. But when the slave heard that, he chuckled and he said, hmm, you got too many slaves of too many different hues on this plantation. Suppose we united with those slaves uh, that are not from Egypt, but that are from uh, Lebanon and those slaves from Syria and those slaves from other parts of Africa. Maybe we could have a rainbow here and we could topple Pharaoh. And we would be free at last. Pharaoh's no fool. Pharaoh said, we've got to stop this thing before it begins. <laughs> Wouldn't you, if you were Pharaoh? <laughs> Jesse, 4,000 years later, has risen up and captured the imagination of black people by saying, I want to be president. Others said, how dare him? Now he know he can't run this thing. <laughs> Why not? Well, you know, black folk can't run nothing. Shame on you. We make it run for others. Why can't we now run it for ourselves? <laughs> Jesse's bold bid for the presidency of the United States as the nominee of his party was to say to black people in a subliminal message Never again should we accept leadership that is inferior simply because it is leadership that is white. We must say that if it's white, that does not necessarily make it right. And if it's white and wrong, dump it for something that's black and right. Wouldn't you do that? God used Jesse to create movement. Now, of course, there was another young man on the plantation. His name was Louis Farrakhan. And, <laughs> and uh, he had been going around among the slaves for years. <laughs> he moved so quietly, Massa, Massa overlooked him. <laughs> because he never submitted to the glare of these lights. He didn't want Massa to know what he was doing. <laughs> he had learned a long time ago that if you're going to build something of value, you must build it in accord with the general laws of nature if you want to be successful. So when you want to conceive something, you don't conceive it in the light. You all know that. <laughs> you go off and find you a dark place. 
somewhere. And you keep things quiet until you can't keep it quiet no more. So if you want to rebuild a movement that the government had destroyed and did not like, you can't do it in the glare of the cameras. You must do it quietly and let the seed germinate and send the root down. Then a little later, it'll send the shoot up. And when the shoot comes up and breaks ground, even though it looks tiny and insignificant, if the roots have gone deep enough around rocks, firm enough in the earth, it will have stability to withstand whatever the forces of nature bring against that tender little shoot. And so Louis Farrakhan, following the general laws of nature, quietly went to work in America among black people. Today the press is here, but it was about six years ago when I came to the family affair. And of course, whites weren't paying attention to what blacks were doing, especially those blacks in sporting life, because they already figure that they have us under control. So we were making friends. I wasn't trying to get people to convert. Just understand who you are, what you are, what your responsibility is. And I kept on moving. Finally, Jesse decided to run and he said, Brother, would you help me? And it was a love affair. I love my brother. I didn't ask to become a part of his campaign. He asked me. And when he asked me, I had to decide what could I do, what would I be willing to do to help my brother. I knew that once Jesse started catching on, he would awaken black people at a rate that black folk had never been awakened before. And Jesse would say to our little babies that we could aspire to the heights that never again would young black children think that all we could do is sing and dance and play football and be a boxer. But black folk can think and manage and govern and rule. I knew, I knew that Jesse more than any other candidate, in fact, no other candidate had to consider what Jesse had to consider. Because this country can accept a white person as president. They always have accepted it. But when a black person says they want to be president, that's something new and different and strange for a slave to think he can run the house that his father was sold and bought in. So I knew that Jesse had to consider whether he was willing to die to bring about meaningful change in this society. And when I knew that Jesse was considering dying, I had to walk with my brother. I couldn't let him go down into the valley of the shadow of death alone. We, the nation of Islam, decided to go with him. We decided not only to go with Jesse, but to register and to vote and to help others to register to vote. That's right. We decided to secure his body with our lives. Right. Brothers and sisters, that love between Reverend Jackson and Louis Farrakhan represented something new. It was a disciple of Martin Luther King Jr. and a disciple of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who were at odds with each other, embracing each other now for the good of the whole. Don't you know, don't you know, don't you know? that no slave master will ever encourage brotherhood among the slaves? Don't you know that a slave master wants to encourage a slave to think as an individual? Because as long as you think as an individual, you'll always be a slave. 
Don't you know when slaves start getting too chummy, the slave master has to break that up? Because if slaves ever fall in love with each other, they will have the power to overthrow the slave master and be free at last. Naturally then, Reverend Jackson, as the focal point of movement, would be the target. Early in his campaign, ads came out in various newspapers, particularly the New York Times, Jews against Jesse. Ruin, Jesse ruin. I read the ad. The ad said that Jesse was a dangerous man and that Jesse must be stopped and we are going to act. I don't know what they mean when they say we are going to act, but what it has always meant in the past was whatever is necessary to do to stop this man, we will put a stop to it. Now you and I should not be blind to history because we live in a country that has robbed us of our greatest leadership. Is that correct? That's right. By the assassin's bullet or by the media maligning them, vilifying them and destroying the love of their own people for them. Then leaving them to die in their own good time after their reputation had been destroyed. We should not be blind to history and history has a way of repeating itself. Well, I was aware of this and on a cold winter night in February in Chicago as Reverend Jackson prepared to address the Muslim convention 10,000 people there to listen. It was February the 25th. The Jaime remark had been reported. Jesse had not yet admitted that he had said it. But I saw a furor being whipped up by the press that could have created an atmosphere in which Jesse Jackson could have been assassinated. Jesse had already told me, and it wasn't public knowledge, that there were 67 real threats on his life at that early stage of October, uh, pardon me, of January. By February, it had reached 100. That's right. And six Caucasians had already been arrested. In jail for planning Reverend Jackson's assassination. Still, the press had not said anything about it. Jesse didn't make it public, but I felt it was my responsibility to say to black people, everything is not all right. That's right. This brother is marching toward his death, and we need to be wide awake and alert to save his life. My thought was, according to the scripture, they wanted to kill Jesus, but they feared the people. And as long as people surrounded Jesse, Jesse could make it. I told them that night, we can stand to lose an election. We can't stand to lose Jesse Jackson. I was not wrong. I spoke to Jewish leaders and ask them, do you understand what you're doing? You are the ones that say you want to better black Jewish relationships to come out against our champion in the way that you're doing. You are exacerbating those tensions and driving Jews and blacks further and further apart because Jesse Jackson represents our aspirations. So it's not Jews against Jesse, it's Jews against the millions that have lined up against Jesse. And I urge them, sit down in dialogue with the man. That's right. We have our self-interest at stake here, both Jews and blacks. Yes, sir. That never came out in the newspaper. But I warn them that if any harm came to Reverend Jackson, he would be the last black man that they killed. That's right. 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 
Now, brothers and sisters, to me, that's an act of intelligence to warn people who are blind and headed toward their destruction what they're about to fall into. <laughs> We're not the same old black people that our fathers were. You got to understand that. I told them that we are tired of feeding our leaders to America like raw meat to a wild beast. And we're not going to take it anymore. That's what I was saying. And 30 million black people cannot be placated if you kill our leadership. Jesse Jackson had captured the imagination of black people like no leader in the history of America. I thought they should understand this yes, sir. and act intelligently. But instead, I was called a black Hitler the next day. I was accused of threatening Jewish people. With what? <laughs> Wanna threaten you with marshmallows? <laughs> we carry no weapons? What are we gonna threaten you with? I'm just warning you intelligently, don't carry yourself in this manner. You so against Jesse, you can't see your actions are contributing to the very thing you would say you're trying to avoid. All right, brothers and sisters, the rest is history. Naturally, I, I got on Milton Coleman's case, and I do think his is a case that we should have gotten on. There are black reporters here tonight or this afternoon. I'm not saying to black reporters that you should not be critical of any person that is in public life. That's your duty. That's your job. You should do your duty. Do your job. But if a statement is off the record, then ethically and morally, All right, yeah. You should leave it off the record, or if it is that offensive to you, tell the person, don't make that statement again, otherwise I'll have to publish that. Then you put the burden. Then you put the burden back on the speaker or on the leader. Milton Coleman at no time warned Jesse that he disapproved of what Jesse was saying. I thought that his actions were traitorous. That's right. I thought that his actions were treacherous. That's right. And to me, he delivered up his brother. Yes, sir. Into the hands of those who were bent on ruining his bid to be president. That's right. Now that's my assessment. I talked with Milton Coleman on the telephone at least on three occasions, saying to Milton, I would like to sit down with you and talk to you man to man, brother to brother. Everything we say, Milton, will be on the record. You bring your recorder, I'll bring mine. You question me, and I'll question you. I want to know what was in your mind when you did what you did. Yes, sir. All right. All right. The only way that Milton said he would meet with me is that he would be the interviewer. He would remain in his repertorial stance and I would be a subject to be questioned. I said, that's not proper. I said, I have said to the people that you are a Judas. You owe it to me that if I have made a mistake, I can go back and correct it. You owe it to me yes, sir. to explain your actions. And I owe it to you to tell you why I have decided to say what I said. Well, we never met. We never talked. They kept on going until they said that Farrakhan said that Judaism is a gutter religion. And then they jumped all on Christian leaders Political leaders repudiate Farrakhan. Now I have the distinction <laughs> of being the most openly censured and repudiated black man in the history of America on the basis of a lie.
Now, if I said something like that and was guilty of being anti-Semitic, then I would feel terrible. I sleep very peacefully at nights. In fact, some said today, why, you look better this year than you looked in 78 when I saw you. The pressure must wear well. I don't care if the whole world repudiates me. If I'm right, right has more power than the empty breath of your mouth or the foul drippings of your pen. You cannot stop the truth by making the bearer of truth an anti-Semite. You have yet to call me a liar. All right then. And so, my brother was forced to repudiate his brother's words. And you know he went to the convention and Mondale smacked him. When I say slapped him, I mean disrespected him. Never in the history of black people has a black man gone to that convention with the kind of black support that Jesse went with and if Mondale were a truly smart politician he would have recognized that achievement and honored Reverend Jackson for doing what no other black man had done and he would have said I recognize the message coming from the black constituency they're tired of being taken for granted by the Democratic Party. I've got the message, Reverend Jackson, and we intend to make a change. But they didn't do that. Now, Reverend Jackson is out in the cold, waiting for a signal from Mr. Mondale that he and his supporters might work enthusiastically for the Democratic ticket. I say that the signal has already been given. Yes, sir. And we should not be oblivious to the signal that Mondale is sending. After I uh, lambasted Mr. Mondale at the press club the next day, he said, well, I've, I've given Charles Rangel the uh, <laughs> spot as one of the many yes, sir. assistant campaign organizers. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think about that, Mr. Farrakhan? Black people all over this country, brothers and sisters, are tired. They're hungry. They're out of work. They're insecure. And token Negroes in positions of no power, titles but no power, cannot satisfy the hunger of the masses of our people. Now, beloved, in this room are music lovers. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But in this room are slaves. Listen, just listen. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Please just listen to me. Slaves. Slaves. What is a slave? A slave is one whose power and authority is ruled over by another. That's right and whose sphere of freedom is limited according to the wishes of his master. Yes, you see, the slave does have power, the slave does have authority, but somebody else masters the slave's power and authority, and the slave's sphere of freedom is limited according to the wishes of his master. Are we slaves? Look, in the music industry, which is a billion dollar industry, 
who is making the money for the master. Talk back to me. It is black people making the money for the master. Is that right? For the first time in 60 years, 80% of the hits around the world, black music. Yes, sir. For the first time, the first 10 in the top 10 black artists. Is that right? Yes, sir. The greatest artists that we have produced in terms of appeal. Michael Jackson yes, sir. is making money for himself and money for CBS but his power and authority is ruled over by another and his sphere of freedom is limited according to the wishes of a master. Are you free or are you a slave? This is our story, brothers and sisters. You got a job. Some of you say, I got a good paying job too, man. <laughs> Naturally, the master can give you a few crumbs because you are like the Bible's Lazarus. You don't want the loaf. You want the crumbs that fall from the master's table. So he gives you a little here and a little there. It allows us to wear a little gold and little diamonds and drive a nice car and live in a nice home. That's not where it's at, brother and sister. It's our talent. It's our wealth. Why shouldn't we control the whole pie? Yes, sir. The whole pie. Uh-huh. It's not about anti-Semitism. Farrakhan is not an anti-Semite. I know where the power is and I'm going by the help of Almighty God to get that power and give it to the black man to whom it rightfully belongs. That's the argument. He's a virulent anti-Semite. That's what he is. He's a racist and a bigot. Can you hear that hypocrite, Mr. Bush, last night? Yes, sir. We're not going to tolerate anti-Semitism and bigotry in the hate-filled words of a Louis Farrakhan. You ought to stop, Mr. Bush. You know, white folks are so masterful in their deceit. So they don't use words in the public anymore. Nigger. Uh -huh. Schwarzer. Right. Coon. <laughs> Burrhead. <laughs> Watermelon eater. <laughs> Whatever kind of name they got for us. It's, a, it's not nice now to publicly say, hey nigger. So they don't say anything. They use the right words. How do you do? <laughs> Mr. Jones, so pleased to have you with us. But the activity is anti-black. Right. Mr. Bush, you're a hypocrite. You and your president. Mr. Bush, you don't frighten Louis Farrakhan. Right. What do you mean you won't tolerate anti-Semitic remarks? What do you intend to do about it? Do you intend to tear up the Constitution and abridge my right of free speech? 
because I say things that you don't like to hear? What is anti-Semitic about what I say? Mr. Bush? What is the definition of anti-Semitic, Mr. Bush? If you can prove that I'm an anti-Semite, I'll shut my mouth, but I can prove to the world that you and your president and your policies are anti-black. Yeah, I want you to print what I say. Trouble with most black people, you know what I'm saying is right, but you don't have the courage to say it and you hide your hand and go in the room and get under the bed, lock the door, turn out the lights, listen to my tape and say, right on brother, say it, say it, say it. You don't have to talk. I say it. Don't back down. Stand up for what you know is right. You know that America's policies are anti-black. That's why black people can't advance. Because the government sits on our head. The social system, the political system, the economic system crushes out black people. You don't have to use it in words. The anti-black is in a system that is against our advancement. How could I be anti-Semitic? I challenge B'nai Brith and the Anti-Defamation League and the American Jewish Committee and the American Jewish Congress tell me what is the definition of anti-Semitic. Who are the Semites? If they come from Shem, who is Shem? When was he born? How did you connect yourself to Shem? Where were your father before Shem was born? Give us the definition. I can't stop one Jewish person from success. How could I be anti Semitic? What plan do I have? to hinder Jewish freedom. What plan do I have to take away their media privilege? What plan do we have to stop them from doing business? How could we ever be considered anti-Semitic? Are the Arabs uh, a Semitic people? If the Arabs are Semitic people, who is it that's pushing the Arabs out of their homeland? Is that an anti-Semitic act? Or are Jews the only Semitic people if you are? See, you don't want to come and face the world with Louis Farrakhan. You don't want to do battle with me over the terms because you know you're bound to lose. I have the knowledge of you. I know your father. You don't want to trouble with me. You want to label me because you think my ignorant brothers and sisters will go along with you. But let me tell you something, brother and sister. The day is all over for black leaders who will bow down to those who manipulate black organizations because they finance your ideas. So whenever they want to pull the strings, they have a lever to pull and you can only go so far. You can attack all these others. But if the stranglehold on your neck is put there by a member of the Jewish family, then you have to strangle and shut up and die. You know, I can't say anything because they call me an anti-Semite. You'll never be free.
with that kind of slave mentality because you love your pocketbook more than you love freedom. You love that fine car that you drive more than you love freedom. But you're making little black babies. And if you do not stand up in your generation, you will bequeath to your children the struggle that you were too cowardly to wage in your lifetime. Beloved, I conclude by saying to you we must get out of the position of being a slave. Jesse Jackson was reaching for power. That's what it was about. Had nothing to do with anti-Semitism. If Jesse used the term Jaime, that cannot be considered an anti-Semitic phrase because Jews call themselves Jaime. That's their name. They name each other Hyman and Jaime. I had a sandwich in a Jaime's delicatessen just the other day. <laughs> and the man who owned the restaurant is named Jaime. Anybody that uses that term in the pejorative sense should be looked upon as insensitive but not an anti-Semite is a big difference. You see, beloved, when you reach for power, you got to challenge those who already have it. Frederick Douglass warned us, power conceives nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. And I would like to add to Frederick Douglass, power won't even concede to a demand unless you can back that demand with the power to get what you demand. Do you understand? Now, you disc jockeys, you make the radio station. Yes, you do. That's right. Based on the strength of your personality. And the way you spin those records, you make the station popular. You make the ratings that make the advertisers have to increase what it costs for a 30 second spot, a 15 second spot, or a minute spot. You do that, and the more popular your show is, the more money they make from your show, but not necessarily the more money you make. You spin the hot tunes. You make the record companies millions and millions of dollars. Someone in a writing the other day said, those Arabs are something. They almost forced the whole world into an inflation by raising the price of their oil. Listen to this. Show you how sick the thinking of the imperialists and the colonialists and the slave master is. It was their oil. Europe and America got control of their oil. They finally got the price of their oil or the control of their oil back and raised the price. It's their oil. You need their oil, the price goes up. <laughs> Wait a minute. You need the Cadillac, does the Cadillac price go up? Every year does it go up, brother? <laughs> what am I saying? If the Arabs are given credit by getting control of their own oil and using it for the uplift of the Arab people, we have no oil, we have no land, we have no production power in terms of wealth. But here's what we have. We have the gift of Almighty God on us, in us, over us, and around us. But another people take the gift 
and siphon the power from the gift and use it to enrich their lives while the gifted die, gifted young, black and poor. I say, aren't you tired of this? Or are you? Are you? Is Michael Jackson ours? He should be. He should be. All the black artists, they should belong to us. And the tremendous wealth that they're giving to those who control, part of it should be coming to us, if not all of it, at least part of it. What can you use with a little jive time royalty? And the bulk of the money is going to somebody that can't sing, can't dance, can't play. Am I wrong? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you realize that if the billions of dollars of our talented black men and women belong to our community, we would not have to beg. We could buy our way make our way but we take our power and we give it to another there are those listen to me carefully who control the movie industry we can't make it without going by them we got the talent to act but if you're going to act you'll be in this script and you must play Aunt Jemima you must play Uncle Tom you must be a prostitute you must be the chief pimp Yes, sir. but you can't play a meaningful role Because my script don't call for that. When will we control our own? Listen to me carefully now. The record industry, you don't control nothing. You can set up a record company, but somebody else controls the distribution. So if you have somebody else controlling the distribution, then you can't make no money. We are the fighters, but we're not on the money-making end of it until Don King came along. And how long will they let the king reign (laughs) without security? You see these brothers around me, you say, "Uh uh-huh, he carries his own bodyguards. When you're doing business, you got to have someone who will absolutely protect what you gain, otherwise there's someone there to take it away from you. Why should you set up a business and the mafia take it over? What the hell is wrong with you? You mean to tell me all this fist you got to knock the hell out of each other? You don't have no fist for the mafia? You don't have no fist for nobody else? To protect your own right? That's why I teach. Yes, sir. That's why I will make young men warriors. Yes, sir. Because I know we are at war, whether you want to believe it or not. And the war is whether we shall survive as a free people or live the rest of our life as slaves under the power and authority of someone else. Black magazines, they would like to write a story about Farrakhan, but my advertisers, they'll pull their advertising. So they control the expression of your own truth by the money that they pump into your papers or our papers. Can you see it, brothers and sisters? That's why Jack the Rapper is a man that we all should admire. Yes, sir. Because Jack really doesn't care what anybody thinks about him. He lays it on the line. Mellow Yellow is his means of expressing himself. And he does it. Oh, Jack feels that he's 65. He wanted to retire, but he couldn't. And he shouldn't. Because as long as there is a Jack the Rapper, you young brothers and sisters in the music industry will become inspired by a Jack the Rapper or a Joe Medlin and others, and you will make it better. Yes, 
Yes, sir. But if you won't take counsel from a Joe Medlin or a Jack the Rapper and the old who have paid their dues, how will you get the power that you need to pass on to our young people? I conclude, brothers and sisters, you are a powerful group. You hear me? Oh, you like to party, you like to pop your fingers. You may drink a little and blow a little, you understand? <laughs> but you are a powerful group. You have the children in your hands. That's right. What are you going to do with our children? Do you realize that we have produced the strongest and the best generation of black people that have ever been in North America? That's right. You may not believe it, but these young black brothers and sisters are so mighty because they are the generation of fulfillment while their parents were the generation of faith and hope. Hope looks like this. I believe one day I'm going to be free. Mm -hmm. I hope one day I'm going to be free. That's right. Fulfillment looks like this. Whatever the price is that we have to pay to get free, we're willing to pay it. All right, then. Now the hope is necessary to produce the fulfillment, but they don't look alike. Did you hear me? Your children don't look like you. They look like you here, but they don't look like you here. Thank God. Yes, Look here now. Your children say, watch their walk. <laughs> 10 and 11 years old, they're surly. Have you noticed them? Yes. You smack them, you see them grit their teeth. Yes, sir. <laughs> teachers quitting their job as teachers to drive taxis because the children are giving them fever. <laughs> White teachers are saying, I used to be able to control them, but I can't do anything with them anymore. Not the boys, nor the girls. They threaten to beat me. <laughs> and they do. Yes. And they have. Yes. And they will. Yes. Now look, Reverend, you gotta admit, they ain't coming to church. Children too hip. Say, well, I'm gonna give my money to that cat for. I say he got the same cat like the pimp guy. <laughs> Only he does his with the word of God. No, I ain't getting him nothing. I'm saying what the young people are saying now. They like to sing him, but they don't like to preach him. Because it's not reaching them. They don't want to go to school now. This is black and white. That's right. That's right. Particularly the black. Yes, sir. Blacks don't care for the education. You're saying, child, go to school, get your education. You see him, oh ma. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing happening in school. That's right. <laughs> These are danger signals, brothers and sisters. Yes. Why don't they want to go to school? Because their minds are telling them that in order for them to be interested, they have to be included. If I took a picture right now, this front row, and I developed it immediately and gave it to you to look at, who would you look for first? Naturally, you're interested in the picture because you know you're in it. But if I took the picture of the second row and developed it, you say, oh, you got a picture? <laughs> and you, you keep on your conversation because you're not in the picture. That's right. Well, how do you think little black children feel going to school learning about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Yes. They're not Snow White, nor are they one of the dwarfs. That's right. Learning about Goldilocks. Yes. Dick and Jane. Yes, sir. Dick is white, Jane is white, and the only resemblance they have is the spot that's on spot. That's right. And they say, I can't identify with that. That's 
right. Children are not identifying with what white folks are telling us in school. So music is their identification. Drugs is their identification. Sex is their identification. Hear me well now. See, the teacher can't get the student's mind. Music can. You hear what I'm saying? Preacher can't get the student's mind. Drugs can. Politician can't get the student's mind. Sex has. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Now, these are the three things that are being pushed on the youth to destroy the finest generation that we have ever produced. And you have the power to turn it around. Yes, sir. Look, brothers, all day long, young people hearing something. You spending it. Baby, let's get on down. Baby, let's get on down. Well, little child, you know, and you got that heavy funk beat yes, laid up under yes, that. Sir. You driving the word in, the baby starts shaking. That's right, that's right. And before you know it, the little baby just learned to talk. Baby, let's get on down. That's right. Somebody trying to get the baby up, the baby said, uh uh. Let's get on down. See? Let's get funky. That's right. Mama says, time to clean up. Uh uh, Mama. It's time to get low down and funky. Uh Listen now, this is your music. The beat is laying the words in. And some of these people are so rotten. They put subliminal messages That's right. That's right. on the record saying, let's go on and deal with coke. Uh-huh. That's let's right. worship the devil. That's right. Or let's get in the bush. That's the open message in the bush. And the second one underneath is, let's do freaky things. Yes, sir. See? Now you say, oh, come on, Farrakhan. I think it's very paranoid. <laughs> But your children are doing acts that some of us never even thought of till we got grown. And some of us who've been around a while have never even thought of those acts. But the children are involved in it right now. If you didn't teach them that, who's teaching your babies? Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Now little babies, eight, nine years old, are into drugs. Is that right? That's right. Particularly our little black babies. Now the strength of our whole people is being dissipated through the music, the sex, and the drugs. Yes, sir. Now look, beloved, I got to appeal to you. We want freedom over the pleasure of money and what money can buy. We want our youth to be able to live a productive life. Why not make music that makes sense? Yes, sir. But you see, if your music makes sense, you take it to the top record company, he'll say, "Uh uh-uh. Got a good voice, but I don't like that message. Why don't you uh, make it a little more funky? I'll write some lyrics for you. And when the lyrics come back, it's all gutter. It's all garbage. It's all filth. Are you going to sell yourself to that? We got to have a revolution in this industry, brothers and sisters. And you know something? If we as black artists just say we're not going to do that crap no more. That's right. And you make up your mind you ain't going to play it no more. You know white folks will change. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes, they will. That's right. But somebody got to make the sacrifice. Somebody has to be strong enough to challenge it, even if it means the loss of your job, the loss of your car, or the loss of your life. That's the only way change is made. Somebody has to be willing to make a stand. We've got to challenge it, brothers and sisters. You 
are looked up to by the people in your community. Why don't you be an example? See, if you didn't blow, they wouldn't. But if you are their idol and you're snorting, then you're encouraging those children to follow your example. We gotta clean up. That's what I'm saying. That's right. I'm not crazy. The country is going down the tube with drugs, filthy music, and sex. That's right. Vanessa Williams. Is she our sister? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you condemn that sister? You know, brothers and sisters, you got to try and understand what's going on right. in this country. That's right. You got to understand how the minds are being set for low sexual acts. And you got to understand when you got beautiful women like these that are in this audience here today with fine forms. <laughs> In a crazy world like this, somebody comes right up to you quickly and says, you are really beautiful. You could make a real good model. Spell backwards is let them. You want to be a model, Vanessa? She was a beautiful child, 19 years old, young, impressionable. Yes, I, I would like to be a model. Well, I really don't have any openings for you now. Maybe you can work in cosmetics. Make up the models. And then one day, you know, Vanessa, the model that we have for today didn't make it. Now's your chance. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. But um, this is a, a sort of a partly nude kind of modeling. Oh, please, Vanessa. It's art. <laughs> it's art. That's what they say. Look at your body as artistry. Yeah. Because you're beautiful. Well, all right. You saw her in one pose with her, like a blouse, mm -hmm. holding it. Like she really didn't know modeling, but you could see the girl was kind of shy. Yes, sir. And covering her secret parts, uh -huh. exposing her breasts. And then gradually, over a period of time, the man called in a woman she didn't even know. Yes, sir. Maybe a woman is very skilled at those kind of pictures and those kind of actions. Yeah. This is going to be a silhouette. No one will ever see your face. Well, I don't know. Look, the money's good. I'll pay you $500. That's what they say. I know. <laughs> And before you know it, she's in a strange pose That's right. with another girl posing behind her. Click, click goes the camera. Big, fat freak. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Show, a, show a sexy face. You can do it. Now she becomes Miss America. And they say, man, look at the pictures I got. This woman is Miss America. Hmm? She got two more months to go. That's right. In penthouse. Couldn't wait. Ain't hey, wasn't gonna wait. There's too much money here. <laughs> too much money. I'll buy it. And if that young girl did not have a reservoir of strength within herself. Yes, sir. She probably would have committed suicide. That's right. That's right. Now, I don't know how you feel, but Vanessa is my daughter and your daughter. That's right. 
and she's a victim of circumstances exactly. some hypocritically religious people say well if she was a decent girl she would never have posed for those pictures usually some elderly person who's been reading the Bible all her life yes, you know she didn't understand That's a word right. of it That's right. but not only that mama and grandmama you didn't grow up under the mind manipulating circumstances of this world today which is wickedly wise in manipulating the minds of our people and our young people and you don't really understand the chemical warfare that is being waged on the black community That's right. yes, sir. in the water that you drink you smoke your reef and they dust them with PCP other drugs That's right. and before you know it you become susceptible to very strange ideas That's right. we are helping to destroy the generation of fulfillment I appeal to you beloved spin the records but I would love to you for you to be a giant behind that record talk to your people but talk sense don't be silly. Whoa, baby, here's a hot one coming to you, mama. And what have you said? What have you said? I mean, you're there groaning and grunting. <clears throat> you think some silly woman is on the other side of, oh, I just love the way he says that. <laughs> and here you are, Feeding the filth. I have people listening to me and they love me and I make no sounds like that. That's right. That's right. Some of them think I'm sexy. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I make no foolish sounds. You are a communicator. Start training the people gradually to listen to better things from you. Take some time. Read the newspaper communicator every day. Come up with something that fills their mind with something better. Encourage the artists. Look, baby, you got, you got a beautiful voice. Put something on the track. They're saying something to our children, right. black and white. Right. Say the thing that will save the children, not destroy them. Right. And I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, little by little, we'll be free. I can't do your part, and maybe you can't do mine. But if you do your part and I do mine, yes, sir. and Michael Jackson does his, and, and uh, who else is out there? <laughs> Huh? Oh yeah, Prince and Lionel Richie, help them brothers, sisters help them. I don't want to leave here without saying something about Michael in the very positive sense. I want you to know I love Michael Jackson. Whenever I see him performing, I don't care what I'm doing. Yes, sir. It isn't that I necessarily want to stop. He stops me. Yes, sir. That brother can perform. He's powerful. <laughs> he is absolutely powerful. You know it. I know it. That's right. Now, brothers and sisters, the press wants to make the world think Farrakhan is against Michael Jackson. No, That's sir. silly. That's right. I'm a musician. I was an entertainer. I know what that life is. When you get involved in your music, your music becomes your world. Look at Michael's face. Well, a little job done on it, but no, no, no. I'm not trying to be smart. Michael is a very beautiful human being. You know why he's beautiful? His world is not filled with the ugliness of the reality of the real world. He lives in the world of his music. The things that he loves to play with are things that can give no one pain. 
because they don't have the germ of negativity. They are lifeless forms and he can breathe into those lifeless forms his beauty. It's a form of escape yes, from a harsh world of reality. And in that, Michael Jackson is beautiful but non-threatening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Nobody is threatened by Michael. Yes, so in this world, if you want to get by, don't threaten anybody. Yes, sir. And if you can sing and dance, well, that's all right because white people have always been acceptable or amenable to accepting you as a singer and a dancer. Yes, sir. You're non-threatening. As a DJ, if you're not saying anything, you're non-threatening. That's right. You're cool with them. Yes. Hey, how you doing, crazy sound? Yes, sir. And you say, hey, that's my man. Yeah. <laughs> how you doing, man? That's right. See, you just non-threatening. <laughs> you just non-threatening. But once you become political, yes, sir. Barbara Streisand, marvelous performer, beautiful singer, she's political. She makes a statement with her movie. Mm -hmm. yes. She got a thought that she's trying to project. Frank Sinatra, brilliant performer, he's political, he's got a mind, he's got a world view. They do not allow you to have the same. The moment you become political, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder was a wonder to the world because that magnificent genius, really a god of music, yes, Stevie was putting messages over. That's right. That song's in the key of life. You just can't beat it, brother and sister. And that's what I call putting a message and letting the babies dance and letting the babies boogie. But something is going in of substance to make a better human being. That's what I'm saying. But when you get that political, the government will step in. Have you got tax problems? Most of us do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Keep you non-political. You got it? Well, now, what are you going to do with Farrakhan? You understand? He tries to make people conscious. That's right. To the Jewish people that are here, I say to you with the deepest of humility, I'm not against Jewish people. I admire and respect the great accomplishments of Jewish people. Yes, sir. But I can't condone wrong. I can't condone manipulation. I can't condone the stranglehold that you have on the free expression of black people in their gifts and their talents and their black organizations. Yes, sir. I will fight All right. to the death yes, sir. to release the grip that you have on the black man's free expression. But I'm not against you if you're not one of those that refuse to let black folk go free. I must fight for the liberation of our people. Yes, sir. And that's why they said to me at the United Nations the day, the other day, a Jewish person stood up and said, you're a dangerous man. A dangerous fascist. I had to ask what the word meant. <laughs> I'm dangerous because God has made me effective. Yes, sir. I'm dangerous because if I... A Jewish person stood up and said, you're a dangerous man. A dangerous fascist. I had to ask what the word meant. I'm dangerous because God has made me effective. Yes, sir. I'm dangerous because if I speak and you listen, you won't be the same person again. Right. I'm dangerous 
because I can't be bought. I'm dangerous because I already have a nice car. Yes, sir. I already live in a nice home. Yes, sir. And I can wear diamonds and gold and white folks didn't give it to me. I'm dangerous because I will take it all off and give it back to you because the suit, you made it. The shoes, the Italian, you made it. The socks, you can have the underwear. But me, no, sir. I belong to God and I belong to black people. You can take everything back that you made. Yes, sir. So the only thing you can do with me is kill me. Yes. You can't stop me. That's right. And even in death, I can't die That's right. anymore. You can kill the flesh. Yes, sir. And the flesh will go back to the earth, but the ideas that I represent, they'll come from beyond the grave and wake up black men and women. So discredit me then as a prelude to assassinating me. It's all right. Have you noticed? It's not working. I'm the first black brother in the history of all the black leaders that has been attacked like this and instead of the people turning against me, they're turning toward me. That's a sign, brother, that the day is over for lies and deceit and treachery and trickery. I could never attack Judaism. I could never condemn a revealed word of God to Israel through Moses as a dirty or gutter religion. What I attack is the practice and you are not what you profess. You are what you practice. You can use Jesus' name, but if you don't work the works of Jesus, yes, sir. walk the path of Jesus, then you are shielding your dirty religion under Jesus' holy and righteous name. That's it. You can say you are the Jew according to the scripture that you believe in Moses and what God revealed to him and to the prophets. But if your actions are lying, thievery, deceit and treachery and murder, you're using God's name to shield a dirty religion. That's right. And that's not what God revealed. I'm a Muslim. And no matter what I profess, if I walk a dirty path using the name of Allah and Muhammad as a shield, then I am practicing a dirty religion. Yes, sir. Not that Islam is dirty, not that Christianity is dirty, not that Judaism is dirty, but is your practice in harmony with the teachings of the prophets? Yes, sir. That's all I said. And that's what I meant. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Isn't it clear? You know what? And all the members of the press that had my telephone number, they didn't call me and say, Farrakhan, is it true? You didn't check the statement. You took it as the gospel. You know why? Because the object was to use me to get Jesse. Yes, sir. We must get Jesse at all costs. Get Jesse. Use Farrakhan to get Jesse. But what did you do? You brought Farrakhan to the attention of the world. That's right. And now you wish Farrakhan would go away. It's too late, baby. I'm here and it's all the way. Assalamu alaikum. Family. Minister Louis Farrakhan. Family? Family. Jack Family. Family. God bless you.